Hello everybody, this is Tyler here once again from the Character Workshop. Better buckle up, because we're going to be going to a variety of different places today. So, today I am going to be doing a review and discussion of story number 5 of Doctor Who, The Keys of Marinus. Now, for anybody who didn't see the last episode I did of They Came From England, you're going to be like, well, didn't the last story that you reviewed was story number 3? Shouldn't you be reviewing story number 4? Well... As of right now, story number four of Doctor Who, which was Marco Polo, is, as of right now, the oldest Doctor Who story that has missing episodes. And because of it, all seven of those, ep all seven of those episodes are currently missing. So, and as of right now, there's no official animation of it that we could watch or any proper reconstruction of it. With one exception, there is a 30-minute condensed reconstruction of Marco Polo that's a bonus feature on the beginning DVD box set, which had the first three stories of Doctor Who, which all of them exist in their entirety, and I've already reviewed all of them. So, until we get an animation for Marco Polo, I'm going to skip that story for now. Although, hearing the rumors about BBC America cutting off funds for the animation, uh, probably won't be seeing an animation for Marco Polo anytime soon. But with that ramble out of the way, instead we're going to be jumping ahead of another story by going to story number five of Doctor Who, The Keys... Of Marinus. Now, as I said in the intro, The Keys of Marinus is a story that pretty much goes literally everywhere. And basically, the gist of it, the main plot, um, starts off with the Doctor, Ian, Barbara, and Susan pretty much landing on a mysterious uh, island on, you know, the planet, which, you know, obviously, according to the story's title, is Marinus. And through there, they discovered that, like, you know, the sea around the island is, like, you know, made of acid, so obviously if anybody was to go inside it, they'd die. So, and also throughout, you know, a good portion of the first episode of the story, you know, we see these, like, weird-looking uh, creatures, you know, going around the island, you know, spying on, you know, Doctor and his companions, um, which are referred to as the Vord. Eventually, the Doctor and his companions meets a man by the name of Arbitan, who was the keeper of the Conscious of Marinus, which was a big computer that pretty much uh, was a justice system, uh, which kept law and order all across the entire planets. And he explains to them that the Society of Marinus is in danger as the Vor, which I've mentioned earlier, um, who are basically humanoid creatures protected by amphibian-like uh, black rubber suits, uh, were seeking to enter the tower to, you know, gain control of the Conscience. And to prevent this, the conscience computer, you know, has five keys to search for. And Arbitan, you know, convinces the doctor and his companions to, like, you know, try and, you know, find the keys by force. And literally by force, because they couldn't get access to their TARDIS through a force field. So basically, they had no other choice but to, like, you know, go with Arbitan's plan. So throughout the story, they go to, like, a variety of different areas in search for the rest of the keys of Marinus. Uh, but while they went to the first area, uh, Arbitan was stabbed to death by one of the Fords, and they have then gained control of the tower, which we will get to that portion of the story later on. So the first place that they tried to find the key in was in a place called Morphoten, I think. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Where they were pretty much, you know, went to, like, you know, what looked like to be a very luxurious city, but as soon as, you know, Barbara uh, wakes up and wasn't, you know, given some sort of weird thing on her forehead, which I guess prevented her from seeing what the city was actually like, she found out what the city was actually like, she, you know, was trying to convince everybody else about it, but nobody would listen to her, and it was shown that uh, the whole place of Morton was actually controlled by a couple of weird-looking uh, brain creatures with, like, you know, eyes coming out of their brains. And eventually, you know, Barbara was able to snap Ian out of, you know, hypnosis by smashing the brains, um, life supports. And honestly, it's one of the most unintentionally hilarious, like, moments in that entire story. So after freeing pretty much everybody of Morphton after cre uh, destroying those brain creatures, uh, everybody in that city is no longer under the uh, hypnosis of the brains, uh, including two other people that, like, you know, the Doctor and companions have become friends with, uh, Altos and Sabitha. And both of them request to, like, join them 
in their adventure to look for the keys. So the doctor decides to go to a, another city called Millennius, and then everybody else pretty much goes to a jungle where Susan was the first to arrive and she hears like a bunch of like screaming noises and whispers and you know she started like freaking out way too much as she usually does she'd be like ah 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 Susan as usual being you know a very damsel in distress character which I've already like kind of complained about multiple times in some of my previous uh, Doctor Who reviews so then eventually everybody gets there and they look for the key and Barbara at first finds one on an idol which of course eventually later ends up you know being a fake key as Sabitha points out by it being shorter than like you know natural key so after uh, getting into a trap um, Barbara ends up being in an ancient temple um, and then of course uh, Ian would eventually join her and while they were there they discover um, another uh, person there who is basically a scientist by the name of Darius and before his death he pretty much um, reveals the location of the next key, which at first Ian and Barbara didn't, you know, understand. Um, that was until, of course, you know, the leaves and the branches around the jungle started, like, you know, breaking into the building and start to, you know, attack them. And then eventually they find one, you know, after finally finding out what um, Darius meant by, like, you know, the code, which I already forgot about. So... They found it, and then they teleport themselves into the next location. So the next area that everybody ends up being at is a an icy wasteland where Ian and Barbara, you know, pass out, and they end up getting captured by a trapper by the name of Vassar, who also steals the keys that they have. So eventually when Ian finds out that Altos and the others are, like, out somewhere else in the icy area, he goes out and tries to find, uh... Uh, Altos, and then they later uh, confront Vassor to, like, you know, force him to take it to the ice caves where Sabitha and Susan were. And they eventually find them, and, you know, they try to escape through the, uh, the, the icy caves, you know, while being pursued by mechanized ice soldiers. And they find that the next key that they're looking for is in a block of ice, and they eventually were able to get it out. And while they're trying to escape, uh, Vassor, you know, first of all, they eventually get back to Vassor's place after he, uh, retreated from the journey. So, he takes Susan hostage before, of course, an ice soldier, you know, comes out of the door and stabs him to death. So that everybody was fortunately able to escape, and they were able to be at the next place, um, Millennius, which is, of course, where the the doctor said, said he was going. When Ian arrives at the place first, he ends up getting accused for the murder of one of the guards there, who of course was also a, well not, not a guard, what am I talking about? He was actually like a friend of Altos who, you know, was also looking for the keys. And at Ian's trial, the, uh, the doctor, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, ends up coming back and, you know, ends up being able to convince the judges to postpone the trial until they find some more evidence about it. And while they're doing that, um, and of course while the, the actual trial was going on later on, after finding out more information about the, uh, the, the actual murderer, Susan ended up getting kidnapped as a hostage um, in order for the, uh, the kidnapper to persuade the doctor to stop, you know, investigating, pretty much um, providing the truth as you would say, and the kidnapper at the actual trial was able to convince the judges to find Ian guilty, um, but of course they eventually find, you know, Susan kidnapped and, you know, they were able to find out, you know, more about, um, the murderer, so that part was then uncovered, but, but, uh, of course, you know, the judges already, you know, made the rule about, like, you know, killing Ian, so everybody else had to find another way to, like, you know, find the real murderer so eventually they did and the doctor was able to find out that the final key that they were looking for for Marinus was actually hidden in the murder weapon the least likely place that you would um, try to find a key 
And of course, because they were able to prove Ian innocent, everybody was able to leave and go back to Marinus. So when everybody, of course, returns to Marinus, um, something I forgot to mention earlier, Altos and Sabitha, you know, left for Marinus before the Doctor and everybody else did. And they both ended up getting captured by um, Yartek, who was the one who killed Arbitan. It was also, like, I guess the leader of the Vords, I guess? I don't know. And, of course, uh, four of the keys have been, you know, seized and have been put into the the conscience of Marinus. So that eventually the Doctor was able to, like, you know, free Altos and Savitha and, you know, was able to unmask the Vord. And there was a portion of the story where, like, you know, Ian and Susan, you know, arrive at the conscience where they thought they saw Arbitan, but it was literally just Yartek in disguise, and, you know, they gave, um, Yartek the final key, and then, of course, when the Doctor, um, and everybody else eventually finds out what Ian did, Ian then, you know, surprises them by, uh, saying that he gave Yartek the false key that, it, that they found earlier, the Screaming Jungle, and that Ian actually had the real final key. So, when Yartek placed the fake key into the conscience, uh, the machine that explodes, and, uh, he is killed along with all the other Vords in there, and of course, at the very end, you know, everybody escaped the tower, which was a very, uh, rushed scene, I guess, from what I remembered. Uh, basically the scene as it went, you know, the Doctor and everybody else were leaving the temple, black screen, and then the next scene, everything seemed fine, they were back at the TARDIS, you know, about to leave, and I was like, did they, like, not have the, the budget to, like, you know, do a proper, like, you know, destruction scene for, like, the Vords and stuff? I don't know. But yes, everybody ended up being back at the TARDIS, you know, the Doctor, Susan, Ian, and Barbara, then, you know, go back while Altos and Sabitha, you know, decide to stay and, you know, basically make uh, Marinus a better place, you know, not be, you know, have their laws and order, like, you know, dictated by a machine. So, yeah, that's pretty much how the Keys of Marinus um, ends off. So the Keys of Marinus... Marinus? The Keys of Marinus, as I've seen... Um, definitely, you know, definitely an interesting concept, I would say, in terms of a story, you know. As I mentioned, you know, in my brief little synopsis, um, everybody pretty much goes to, like, different locations throughout the story. Um, definitely kind of a nice variety compared to, like, you know, the other stories before where it mostly just took place in one area. Um, but yeah, I actually, that that's kind of one of the, uh, aspects of the story that I actually kind of liked, you know them going to, like, you know, different places, and it kind of reminds me of, like, a, uh, another story that we'll be getting on to, uh, much later in the Hardnell era. Uh, but as, um, for some of the negative parts of the story, uh, I will have to, you know, criticize the, uh, the court, um, scene, which, you know, of course, ended up being, like, you know, all of episode five, and also being most of, well, not most of, a good portion of episode six, you know. I feel like, it just sort of turns things away from, like, you know, the rest of the story, because pretty much everywhere else that they've been to has been, like, you know, either, like, mystical or out of the ordinary, like, you know, the Morpho area, which, of course, was a kind of like a city where, like, you know, it was made to look like some sort of elegant area, but it's, in reality, if you're not under hypnosis, it's just crap. <laughs> um, and, of course, the brain creatures, as I mentioned earlier, you know, and then, of course, there's the jungle, and then there's the Iceland, and then, finally, we get to a freaking like, city with, like, a court scene going on, you know, something that you see, like, very often in dramas. I don't know, it just, honestly, like, the court scene episodes kind of, like, you know, threw me off a little bit. Um, that was kind of a minor criticism I have with it. Um, I feel like, more than usual, Susan is definitely, like, you know, more of a, like, a damsel in distress, just, like, you know, gets freaked out over the most simplest of things. Like, literally, another scene in episode three where they're in the jungle, like, her and Barbara were just, like, you know, sitting there waiting for everybody else to come back, and, you know, Susan was laying down, and there was, like, one of the leaves from, like, the... Not leaves. One of the branches from, like, one of the trees, like, almost grabbed Susan, and, like, oh, my God, she was like, ah, ah, get it off me, get it off me! 
and you know Barbara just like you know was there and just simply like stomped on it and killed it and like Susan was still freaking out even after like Barbara took care of the problem like oh my god yeah you can probably tell from like you know all my other who reviews that I'm not really the big fan of Susan um mostly because of the way that her character was written not because of you know the way she acted you know Caroline Ford she does a pretty good job but like I just wish like the character like you know had some more growth and you know ended up being more mature. Speaking of characters, um, we don't really get to see the Doctor too much in this story. We only see him in, like, episodes 1, 2, 5, and 6. Um, so yeah, literally, like, one-third of the story, we don't get to see the Doctor at all, and that's kind of jarring, because I don't think that's ever happened before, you know, prior to Keys of Meredith, where there were, like, episodes where the Doctor doesn't show up. Yeah, I just found it to be really weird. Um... And I looked this up, apparently the main reason for doing that was, of course, uh, Hardell was actually on holiday during the productions of episodes 3 and 4. So, I guess that's probably what happened. And funny enough, I've also looked into this, um, Caroline Ford, who played Susan, um, she recalled that the cast um, could also have a few more giggles during rehearsals, as she would say, because, you know... You know, while Hartnell's around, he often, he often has a tendency to, like, you know, forget his lines, which was time-consuming and kind of annoying to some people. But uh, since Hartnell wasn't around, you know, the cast were able to, like, I guess have a bit more of a fun time, I guess? I don't know. As for the other characters in the story, I think they're portrayed very well. You know, Ian, you know, is done well. Barbara's done pretty well. Uh, I also kind of liked the, the guest characters as well. Um, Altos and Sabitha, you know, they made... You know, pretty good, you know, one-time companions, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah, everybody else, I think, did a pretty um, pretty good job. Um, and also, uh, I kind of want to briefly bring up the Vord. Um, kind of the, uh, I guess you could say, are they the main villains? I guess they're kind of are. Well, at least in episodes 1 and 6, they are. You know, they don't really appear throughout the story. But, like, yeah, the Vord's definitely, you know, very... Interesting design, and, uh, uh, so, uh, fun fact for you guys, uh, Keys of Marinus was actually written by Terry Nation, the same guy who also wrote the Daleks, and pretty much wrote a majority of the Dalek, Dalek stories for, like, the 60s and the 70s, um, and Keys of Marinus was one of only two stories written by Terry Nation that did not have the Daleks in them, uh, the other one being The Android Invasion from Season 13 with Tom Baker, but overall... Keys of Marinus is a pretty decent story. Um, I Like I said before, I love the idea of, like, you know, them going to different areas. Um, I just wish the, the court scene wasn't there. I wish it would have been replaced by something else. And, you know, something, of course, a bit more, like, fantasy or mystical-themed, like, compared to, like, a freaking court scene. Like, come on. <laughs> like, and also, another uh, critique, uh, the court scene took a little bit, you know, too much time, I think. You know, I feel like they, they could have, like, you know done just one episode of that, you know, have, like, the final episode take place entirely on Marinus. I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's only a minor critique, you know. Otherwise, it's still a pretty decent story, you know, good cast. Um, production value, I would say, is okay, you know. I feel like the brain creatures were kind of, like, you know, the 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 weird point of the story, and, you know, yeah, they were, they were kind of unintentionally funny. But yeah, Keys of Marinus is a pretty decent story, which is why I'm going to give that story a rating of 7 out of 10. But that is about it for this episode of Came From England. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my little review and discussion of the Keys of Marinus. And if you did, feel free to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more episodes of Came From England, and of course, mediocre plush content in general. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. That is about it. This is Tyler from the Character Workshop, signing out. And I know, something I forgot to point out, I did change uh, clothes while, you know filming th this episode, so whatever. Um, but next time, we're going to be stepping out of the TARDIS for a little bit to be talking about something completely different.